Welcome back to Decrypted Tech. In our labs today we have another one of ASUS's Z77 boards. This one is going to be sort of their top of the line of the mid-range product. This is the P8Z77-V Deluxe. I want to try saying that five times fast. As you can see this is going to be very similar to the P8Z77-V that we took a look at a little bit earlier. It's got some of the same features but they're a little bit expanded upon because you've moved up into that upper level of the performance line or I actually should say the upper level of performance in their mid-range line. What they've got here is you, you've got your Dash V, which is your typical entry, you know, mid-range board. You have your wireless. You have some of the same features, SLI, Crossfire, uh, Lucid Logics Virtu MVP, the DTS Ultra PC2, and the DTS Connect. You also have your uh, power controls. You have your, you know, overclocking, the Smart Digi Plus that's been brought into this line, this mid-range line, down from the Republic of Gamers boards. You also have your Wi-Fi Go, you have your one-click speed up, which is going to be uh, inside your AI suite. You're going to be able to just click a button and, you know, bam, you're going to be a little bit faster. And you have your Fan Expert 2, which is going to give you a great level of cooling and control over your fans that are plugged into your case. And that's just, you know, part of what they're bringing into this is they move their feature set to match the market that the board is, is presented to. And of course, this is that upper end of that mid-range line where people are going to be a little bit more demanding on their boards and they're going to want a little bit more out of them. So we'll just take a look at what we've got going on with the box. And we've kind of covered the top, the front here, where we just you know, briefly discussed some of the features that are going to be embedded in this board. But also, ASUS is going to give you one of their favorites, which is going to be that uh, you know, open flap. This is what some of what we would normally see on the back of a box. You're going to have a little bit additional features that are going to be presented to you here. You have your network eye control, which of course is going to be almost across the entire board here. You have your smart Digi power control. This is a big push to this line. It's bringing that uh, Digi Plus here, but it's giving you features and a method of controlling it that's going to be almost one click. You don't have to understand why you need to have different frequencies on your voltage, on your voltage regulation modules or why you need to do this. You can say, I want this to run faster, I want this to run quieter, and you're going to have those smart controls that are going to be embedded in there. Of course, you have your EPU, which uh, ASUS has had for a number of years. You know, and then again, these two right here just sort of play into each other. You have your USB BIOS flashback, great feature, where if, even if you don't have CPU and RAM or you can't get your CPU to post because it happens to be not compatible with the BIOS you have, you throw in a memory stick and you can get it to go. You don't need CPU and RAM. All you need is power, properly formatted USB stick, and you're off. You also have ASUS's USB 3.0 Boost. Again, that's a great feature in that it allows the USB controller to operate outside of what they call the normal bot mode, which is pretty much one bit at a time traveling down a channel. Why not use that wider path to send multiple bits back and forth? All right, we flip over to the back. Again, you see what looks like you know the outline of the board. You've got your different feature sets here. You have your specifications. You have a little bit more information down here. You have your AI Suite 2, your Turbo, 100% uh, solid capacitors. Of course, they just go into a little bit more detail of what you get with all of the uh, other pieces, such as the Wi-Fi Go and the DLNA streaming, PC remote control, and we'll talk about a lot of these features a little bit more in depth, not only in our write-up, but also when we cover the actual performance of the board, which will be later. So let's go ahead and put the box aside, and we'll take a look at what you actually get inside the box. Okay, as with any motherboard, you're going to have a manual. It's going to tell you what you need to know about the board and get you prepared for everything inside here. ASUS also includes a Wi-Fi Go card user guide. It's going to give you all the information you need to know about the Wi-Fi Go card, what to look for, how to install it, all of that. Interestingly enough, a lot of that is actually included inside your regular manual here. So this is sort of an add-on in case you just want to know about that. Of course, we have our HDMI 1.4 3D compliance statement. You have your drivers and utilities disk, which is important. It has quite a bit of uh, extra stuff on there now. Uh, again, with anything, we are going to recommend a manual installation to make sure that you don't get any features that you might not want. One. You have your Q connectors. Great feature. You have uh, an SLI slash Crossfire bridge, just to keep those that are going to use multiple GPUs happy. You have two wireless antennas that will plug into your Wi-Fi Go card more antennas the more spatial streams that you can have it's pretty much a multiple input multiple output type situation well it is a multiple input multiple output situation where you're going to be able to run more data back and forth through the card it's going to give you a little bit better performance on it okay you have your io shield again this is the top of the line this is the deluxe you have that padding which is great like that makes it a little bit easier to push this into place you have two of your regular sata 2 cables and you have four SATA 6 cables, or SATA 3 cables, actually SATA 6G, what some people call it. 
And then of course your Wi-Fi Go module. This module actually is going to have not only Wi-Fi, but it's also going to have Bluetooth uh, version 4.0 and 3.0 plus HS. So this is really a good module. It's going to drop in there. It has that same pinout and it's also going to mount to the board just exactly like we showed you with the, uh, the Dash V. It's just going to have that option for that Bluetooth 4.0, which is nice. If you like Bluetooth, you know, maybe you have a Bluetooth keyboard or you have one of those Bluetooth media receivers, something like that, you can use that. Or if you really want to connect your phone to it via Bluetooth, you can do that. All right, so that covers everything that you get actually inside of the box with the exception of the motherboard. So we'll pull that out now and show you exactly what you get there. All right, the P8Z77-V Deluxe is a full-size ATX board, as you might have expected, from the uh, actual motherboard box. And it's going to give you a lot more room. Again, we're going to talk about ASUS's trace tuning. They do trace tuning a little bit better than many of the, most of the other companies that are out there. And you really fine-tune those, which is great because you can deal with performance issues on the front end rather than trying to fix them with repeated BIOS updates. At that point, your BIOS updates are sort of like fine-tuning things just to make sure you're getting the most speed out of your original trace tuning layout. And that's going to give you performance benefits not only in the way that the board runs and its stability, but it's going to give you performance benefits in terms of the speeds that you can actually get from it. Eventually, you'll be able to drop faster and faster memory in here and still maintain that support. In fact, ASUS is one of the few vendors that gives you a listing. I mean, just a pretty you know, long listing of the memory modules that it supports just right out of the gate with all of their qualified vendor lists just directly here inside their manual. They have quite a few and they actually go all the way up to 24, uh, excuse me, 2500 megahertz with their memory from there and then they cover each individual specification and term all the way down to 1333. So you're just going to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more functionality and features that are just going to be bundled into that just based on the fact that ASUS does that trace tuning on the front end instead of trying to fix it on the back end in the BIOS to make sure that you have that compatibility going on. And they also do uh, continued performance testing and tuning as well as qualifications. So let's go ahead and start with the, our layout in the normal way we would. And we'll go ahead and start up here at the top. Of course, you have your four memory slots, which is going to be very typical for uh, what you would see with any uh, you know, 1155 processor. It's going to be dual channel, not quad or triple channel. You have your uh, Memo K switch there. You have the TPU switch that's going to be up here next to your 24 pin power port. You have one of your four pin fan headers there, USB 3.0 front panel header. We'll turn this around. This is going to be another feature we've seen on, on multiple ASUS boards now. It's going to be the option for two fans for your CPU. This is keeping in line with the higher performance air coolers that we're seeing on the market that have multiple fans or the option for multiple fans. It's already built in. You're not hunting around and running fan cables underneath video cards and all of that. You have your eight pin X, um, aux. ATX power connector that's here. You do have a little bit more room. Once again, we are always going to recommend that you get an extension cable with this. It just makes installation in a case that much easier. All right, you have good cooling. Again, this cooling is going to be that chunky style that we talked about. It's got nice blocky shapes to it, but it's also, as long as you've got some good airflow covering this, you're going to get uh, some pretty good cooling out of this. It's also got a nice thick base in there that's going to allow it to pull in that heat, and then these will allow it to dissipate off again with that proper air cooling or actually airflow. Of course you have an additional heat sink here. It's going to cover some of the additional uh, components and you know just to make sure everything's cool it follows your heat pipe around. This is on its own which is uh, to me a little bit odd. I would rather have all of them connected in there just to make sure we're getting good cooling. You know of course that's if you have good air cooling. And then you have your heat sink down here covering your Z77 which this is again it's pretty blocky. It's an interesting design and we hope that it works out but we don't see any reason why it shouldn't. We do know that the Z77 runs a little bit hotter than what we're used to seeing with like the P67 or even the X79. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look. If you'll notice something here when we're looking at the, the expansion slots, you have several PCIe 3.0 slots. They're gonna be right here. They're gonna be these blue ones. You have a bunch of 1X. You have, of course, your 16X. And then in the middle here, you have a PLX bridge, which is gonna add some additional PCIe lanes that are going to take over for some of those ancillary devices such as uh, another PCI, another SATA 3.0 controller or additional PCI slots, PCIe slots that they want to throw onto the board. So let's flip this around real quick and we'll show you some of what we've talked about before. You'll notice that up here on this one a US, uh, PCIe 3.0 slot, you've got all 16 pins. These two down here are only going to have the 8 
pins, or excuse me, eight X8 pins that are going to run to the board. So both of these are only going to be X8 no matter what you do, and this one will continue to be X16 until you start throwing in uh, SLI. All right, let's look along the bottom here. You have your board-mounted controls. You have your EPU switch that's down here. It's separated from the uh, TPU switch, which is up further by the memory slots. You, of course, have your clear CMOS button. You have a diagnostic LED, your front panel headers, a couple of USB 2.0 out headers, your uh, audio for your front panel, and pretty much a 